Welcome back. Again, this is the San Francisco earthquake slash fire of 1906. Building out of bricks, just stacked up, not a good idea. You want buildings that can flex. The only problem with making buildings out of San Francisco in 1906, out of flexible material like wood, was, well, they burned. So you're in a tough position. Made out of stone that was unreinforced, it's going to collapse and crush you. Made out of wood, it's going to break into fire. Oh, man. Moved to Arizona. This was the Northridge earthquake, I think back in the 1970s or 80s. I have no idea what that's doing there, but this is a helicopter shot. It's just minor damage from an earthquake. I think this is kind of cute. This is Nicaragua back in the 1970s. These were large apartment buildings that were built on, not bedrock. The wise man builds his house upon the rock. The foolish man builds his house upon the sand. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You build your big building on the sand, earthquake comes along, wiggles the ground, your building can collapse. Notice that the buildings themselves are fairly strong. They hung together, but they did fall over. You need a good foundation in life as in structures. This is the Kobe, Japan earthquake. Lots of people killed in this one. And they've started building their freeways differently because of this. Now, tsunamis. You're going to see tsunamis in the films. But you do know that tsunami means a seismic sea wave caused by the motion of land near or in the ocean up or down. Lateral motion doesn't typically cause a tsunami. Only when stuff moves up or down. Now, tsunamis can move about 420 miles an hour. A lot of people say that's about the speed of a jet. Jets actually go faster than that, but you get the idea. In the open ocean, tsunamis are just swells that come by you, really large swells. They aren't these killer waves. Sometimes in a science fiction movie, they'll show this huge wave that's a tsunami. Not in the open ocean. Tsunamis become magnified only in shallower water. Here's how tsunami forms. If the seafloor drops, or if this rock moves up, or a combination of both, you get a column of water that's being pushed up. And when that column of water ends up getting close to the shallow areas, it creates a breaker, not exactly really a breaker. Before the tsunami enters, however, a lot of times the water near the shore will recede, leaving this area exposed. People that don't know better along the shore have been reported to go out and grab fish that were stranded. And then when they're 100 yards offshore, they're kind of surprised by a big wave coming in that's going faster than they can move. Now, when the wave comes in, it no longer is moving 420 miles an hour because it is suffering friction from the bottom, or the top of the earth, I guess we should say, the bottom of the sea, and it slows down, but they're still destructive. Here you go, here's the recession and the wall of water coming in. And again, you're gonna see that in the video, so there's no need to dwell on that. Hawaii is very interested in tsunamis because it has lost a lot of people to tsunamis historically. So they know how, how many hours of warning they have depending on where the earthquake occurs. For example, oh, Hawaii right here. If one occurs in Alaska, they've got about six hours warning. This is important, 1946, earthquake in Alaska. This is what happened in Hilo. This is a big wave. This is off Coconut Point, uh, near where I used to work on the volcano. Everything in Hilo near the shore was destroyed by this. Here are people running from it. I can't believe somebody paused to take a picture. In the Christmas day, or 26th of December, a uh, uh, tsunami of 2004, was it? Here is the wave height in feet. Take a look. Right in this area, 60 feet. Here's Phuket, a little island off of Thailand. By the time you get over here to Africa, you're down to... What are we looking at? What do you think? Foot, foot or two? And this is seven hours of warning. Now, out in the ocean, we have placed buoys that that detect this pressure wave coming through. It sends a little signal up to satellites. 
and then those satellites send the signal back to the uh, tsunami early detection system in Hawaii, which then relays it to the rest of the world. The, there are also are other places around the world because people are starting to realize this could be important. Believe it or not, in the early days, the computer processor for the satellite was taken from an old Commodore 64 computer. They were cheap, they worked, and for some reason they did well in space. Kind of cool. If you're in Hawaii, you're going to see this kind of thing all over. Okay, the Scotch Cap Lighthouse. This is what it was like before the tsunami. This is what it was like afterwards. This was an extremely strong concrete reinforced building and the entire area was scrubbed. I don't know if I want to go to the website on it, but I read the transcript from people who cleaned up after this. This thing was just scoured. People that were in here, some of them got out and went to the higher ground. Some of them didn't and only their body parts were found. I'm serious, they were ripped apart. I remember reading about an arm that was found and a kneecap. Oh, uh, just gross, sorry. Okay, some cool stuff. A mega tsunami. This is the 1958 Lituya Bay mega tsunami up in Alaska, which I know looks like Canada, but it's really off Alaska there. One of these tsunamis inside the bay was 1,720 feet high. That's crazy. That's 470 feet taller than the Empire State Building's roof. It's the highest recorded mega tsunami in recent times, and this thing has kept happening again and again and again. The entire, it occurs somewhere back in here. By the time it gets out to the ocean, all that energy can be spread out so the size of the tsunami goes down. But that would just be crazy to experience. One boat got washed up here, one got drowned, and another boat with people on it got washed out here, and they actually rode the wave out. Not something that I would want to try. Here is what caused that tsunami. An entire area of rock slid down into this bay, which then created the tsunami. This hat is about 12 inches across. This was a tree, what do you think? Uh, five feet across, and it was just sheared off. And this is way up, seven miles from where the wave originated. That's just kind of crazy. Oh, one more, sorry. Close this one. Okay, again, here's the earthquake warning page. I haven't talked to you about this, but People are watching for earthquakes and tsunamis all the time. Here's the Scotch Cap Lighthouse. You just look for it, Scotch Cap. And there's stuff all over the web. And here's more Scotch Cap Lighthouse stuff. Uh-oh, back to my presentation. Here's the 2004 tsunami. Somebody took pictures of the water coming in. Again, I would not be doing this. There was a really bad movie that came out, apparently, about this. And it, here is what happens ahead of the tsunami. Somebody, at least, that took this was up away from the water. There was a story about a girl from Holland or Norway who had read about tsunamis. So she got everybody in her hotel and the entire village to go up away from the tsunami, and they were all rescued because she had read about this kind of thing. You'd think that people that knew, that lived in the area, would know about it. By the way, elephants, apparently, detect the vibrations too, and they tend to head away from this. At least that's the story out there. Uh, this is kind of unpleasant. I don't know if you can tell, but they are digging up a body here after a tsunami. This is one down in Indonesia. That was a child's work uh, notebook, and that's the school that's been destroyed. Um, Palikulani. It's an area that we talk about in topographic maps. We didn't with you guys. But this is an area near Kilauea on the Big Island of Hawaii. Here's a poly or a cliff. This entire area here just dropped down in an earthquake. There were Boy Scouts camped along here. The tsunami came up and scoured this and killed the Boy Scouts. 
1964, large earthquake. This was Anchorage, Alaska. Tsunami came in, all this dark area. That's where the water came in, wiping out people and stuff. Large ships and even locomotives were carried inland. <coughs> Again, Alaska and Hawaii are inextric inextricably tied by tsunamis and seismic events. Thus, the warning time for these areas. Here is Hilo, Hawaii, and here is Coconut Island, where we saw pictures earlier. This is the ocean. And this is a tsunami coming in. This is all good, but I think the stuff from uh, Japan more recently is a lot more fascinating and tragic. And then there's the mild stuff that happens from earthquakes. This would be like a train ride from Disneyland. Well, maybe not, but this would be bad. Fault goes somewhere right along here. Here's a house, very pixelated picture, but it's been cracked by the fault. Now, time to talk to you about the difference between a joint and a fault. There are joints and rocks. Rocks break all the time, they fracture. But if there's no movement along the fracture, it's not a fault. This definitely is somebody's fault. <laughs> Here's the Scotch Cap Lighthouse again, before and after. Now, where do earthquakes occur? They, along, they occur along tectonic boundaries, usually along the rim of the Pacific or the Mediterranean and Himalayan areas, also along mid-ocean ridges, and something called Benioff zones, where you have subduction underneath the plates. You've seen all this stuff before. What's weird is we didn't recognize this 80 years ago. People just thought earthquakes occurred anywhere. They didn't. There's a real pattern to them. Here's what happens. Shallow earthquakes, intermediate earthquakes, deep focus earthquakes. More damaging, less damaging. More frequent, less frequent. And where the ocean is splitting apart, you also get earthquakes. Here are the major plates. Here are the types of plate interactions. You can pause and look at that, but I don't want to spend time doing that right now. Now, there are three types of boundaries. You have divergent, where things are moving apart, like oh, <laughs> right here along the middle of the Atlantic. There are transform faults, like right here along California, where things are moving side to side. And you have compression faults where, like down here in the Andes, one plate is sliding underneath another one. Di whoops, divergent. Convergent, where they're getting squished together and transform or sliding. And that's what's going on here in California, where this plate is moving kind of northwards and this one's kind of moving that way which results in this kind of stuff going on. Not good for skateboarders. Now, I hate to do this to you, but how do we predict earthquakes? We're going to pause here and then come back and finish the lecture. Be right back.